Hi, it's Di from Refurbies and I'm going to show you very quickly how I do my raised stencil. So what you'll need is a stencil. I'm using my stencil ladies stencil number 103 in extra, I think it's extra large, yep. Um, a, just a jar or a pot to mix your filler in. The filler, I use poly multi-purpose interior powder filler, some 240 grit sandpaper, spatula, and this is a Maxwell Williams cheese knife. Doesn't have to be a Maxwell Williams one, that's just what I use. Okay, let's get started. Okay, here we go. So the first thing I did was I scuff sanded the entire surface of the drawer front with 240 grit sandpaper. Then I gave it a really good clean with some sugar soap and dried it off. Then I mixed up the filler into a paste. The consistency I like is a really thick paste. I just followed the packet instructions but made sure that it was the consistency that I liked, which I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's, it's a very thick paste. So, and one of the reasons why I use the cheese knife is because it really mixes it up well. You can push it up against the sides and it gets rid of all the bumps. And it's really important to mix it up so it's nice and smooth. I should also mention that it's got about an hour's working time, this stuff. It does go off the filler. So I only make up a small amount. So now I'm just going to line up the stencil to where I want it to be. This stencil isn't quite big enough to do the entire drawer front, so it'll be done in two parts. I'll do as much of the first half as I can and then wait for it to dry and do the second half. So here I'm just spending some time figuring out where I want to position the stencil and when I've got it where I want it, I'll tape it down. Now, this drawer front actually has two drawer pulls, but I'm going to just put one on it. So. I'm not going to worry about filling the holes because the stencil and, and the filler will probably cover them anyway. So for now, I'll just put the stencil where I want it, tape it down, and we'll get started with the filler. It's also worth mentioning to pay attention to what's the top of the drawer front and what the bottom of the what's the bottom of the drawer front because you want the pattern to sort of, I mean, you might not want the pattern to be matchy-matchy, but if you want it to be matchy-matchy, then make sure that you position the stencil in the right way for each drawer. So pay attention to what the top of the drawer is, maybe mark it, and then use the previous drawer you've done as a reference. I'm also using the tape to create a border around the drawer front and stop the filler from spilling over the sides of the drawer. This is really messy work, so anything you can do to make it a little bit neater really does help. The tape I'm using is the blue scotch tape that you get from Bunnings. It's not the cheapest tape, but it does everything I want it to do, so I use that one. Um, it gives you really nice crisp lines if you want to mask something off. It um, holds your stencil down where you want it, so it doesn't move. It's yeah, really effective for doing most jobs that you want it to do. So once we finish masking it all off, we're gonna get started with the filler and start building our raised stencil. Just give it a push down to make sure the stencil's stuck in all the places you want it stuck and just start plopping on the filler. So I'm just putting it on all over the stencil. We're gonna smooth it out with the spatula in a minute. Just plopping it here, there and everywhere, literally just throwing it on. And then we get the spatula and we're gonna spread it out as evenly as we can. So I, I, as a rule, don't do it much thicker than two millimeters. Well, well I try not to do it thicker than two millimeters. You might want it really thick it's going to be harder to manage if it's super thick. The thinner it is, the easier it is to manage. But if you really want it to, to pop out, I don't think you need to do it any more than two mils above the stencil. So you smooth it out with the spatula. Try and get it as even as you can. Just be careful that you don't um, 
go over the masking tape and make a mess and get stuff everywhere which is easy to do now the when you pull this stencil off you're going to either see something really tidy or a super mess so let's cross our fingers that this is nice and tidy but remember if it's if it's a mess you can scrape it off and start again it's it doesn't go off immediately it takes a while to set so if you hate it you can scrape it off and start again As you're smoothing it out just try and pay attention to the to the stencil what you can see and if you can see it's thin in some places just add a little bit more smooth it out with your spatula try not to overwork it um, but yeah try and make it as even as you can now once you've done that you very very gently are going to lift up the stencil and reveal what's underneath So don't do what I just did then and let the wet stencil fall on the other side because that just made a really big mess I had to scrape off. But like I said, this is messy. If you do this in a rush, in a hurry, it's, it's gonna, not going to work out. Take your time with it. Okay, so now I've cleaned all that up. This, this part of the drawer front will need to dry it'll take it takes two to three hours to dry it really does depend on the temperature though um so it's about 25 degrees today it's really nice so i think this will probably take about an hour and a half two hours before it's dry enough for us to do the other side of the stencil now that once you've done that go and wash off your stencil straight away get all that filler off and give it a clean and start on the next drawer front so I'm going to try and match up the drawers as well as I can and just remember to make sure what's the top and what's the bottom and try and get everything to match. This, this one I'm working on at the moment though is a little bit smaller than the other two drawers. It's got a, a thinner drawer at the top of the bedsides than the bottom so I'm going to do position this stencil a little bit different. So speed it all up for you now and we'll do the rest of the drawer fronts while we're waiting for things to dry. Don't forget that in between each of these applications I'm cleaning the stencil and laying down a new the same stencil clean and dry and new tape now we've gotten it's you know magic of television it's an hour and a half later and the stencil is dry enough for us to figure out where we want to position the stencil to do the second half i didn't pick a particularly easy stencil to line up so i'm just going to spend a bit of time trying to figure out what i want to be on the other half and then I'll speed it all up and we'll get the rest done. We're just doing exactly the same thing as we did on the first half, or first two thirds, I should say, rather than a half. So we're doing on the last third the exact same steps as we did on the first two two thirds of the draw okay so it's been a few hours both sides are dry and now we do the scary part which is we're gonna sand off all the peaks and try and make it nice and even so i think you can hopefully see there there's a there's a few peaks and that's because as you pull the stencil off because you know the fill is wet so it's sort of pulls up with the stencil and forms little peaks but we're going to take those peaks down with the sandpaper now very very gently and slowly take your time because it's at this stage it's very very delicate it isn't going to completely bond and to the drawer until after you've painted it and the paint's cured so I've done 
many of these raised stencils over the years. I've done them under chalk paint, under acrylic paint, under mineral paint, under this Pure Eco silk paint that I'm using today. Um, and, and, and they've all held up lovely. I haven't lost a piece or anything over the years. However, it's not solid and bonded and safe until after the paint's been applied and the paint is cured. So it all sort of works together to, to strengthen it up. So I'm just moving about the stencil, just feeling for the peaks and looking for the peaks, being really gentle, especially with the thin parts because they will be the most delicate. Try not to let the sandpaper, like if you feel it grabbing on something and sort of stalling as you move it, then be careful that you don't pull off a bit of the stencil. It is really delicate at this stage. So I'm just having a little bit of a feel around and making sure that it's all even and not sharp because it's quite sharp those peaks i would normally do this outside but all i've got to film this is a mobile phone stuck to my display cabinet so i'm doing it inside because it's when you sand the filler it's very very dusty it creates a lot of dust Just trying to make it nice and even and, and to a, you know, a, a depth and height that I'm happy with. If you can see there that most of the peaks are gone. Just have another check and see if anything needs to be evened up a little. And again, be very gentle, especially around the thinner parts. It's worth mentioning too, at this stage, like this, they don't always look this tidy and clean. Like normally I've got dust and residue all throughout the whole thing and it doesn't always look this tidy. And try to remember that you have to, you have to have a go to learn how to do this. It's not something that comes straight away to everyone. I mean, it might, you might be lucky. It didn't come straight away for me. I made a mess plenty of times and scraped it off and started again and scraped it off and started again. You just got to, Trust the process and, and be confident in doing it and don't be afraid to make mistakes because sometimes mistakes end up into happy little accidents that turn out wonderfully. So have a go. Okay, so I'm just checking for any last peaks that I've missed and gently trying to remove any before I apply any paint. So once I've done doing this, I'm going to give it a good clean off for dust and start putting some paint down. Okay, so now I'm going to give it a good dust off. I use a paint brush, well, just just a brush, paint brush rather than a cloth because the cloth is going to grab it and drag, and maybe damage the stencil. And whereas the bristles are just going to move freely through the stencil and all the gaps and and pick up as much dust as you can. The paint that I'm using on these bedsides is pure eco in the silk finish, and not just because I'm a pure eco stockist, but because I am a pure eco junkie. I'm using the color Lagoon. This is a beautiful kind of duck eggy sort of ocean green blue thing. It's beautiful. You'll love it. So give the paint a really, really good stir. I know a lot of people shake their paint, but I, I don't think this is a very good idea because whenever you shake paint, you're going to get bubbles. And I, I know a lot of people say that doesn't matter unless it's a clear coat or something like that, but it does matter. You, bubbles cause all sorts of issues. So just give it a really good stir. I'm using the Monarch Round Detail Brush. The reason I'm using that brush is because I need to get the paint in all the nooks and crannies of the stencil so I'm just literally going to work it into the stencil I'll swirl it in a round swirly motion to get all sides of the stencil covered because it's got lots of dimensions that you need to get the paint on so I'll just literally 
go for it lay the paint down and when when I've got the paint on I will go back and I'll smooth out my brush strokes and neaten it up a lot those of you that have used the pure eco silk finish know that it's self leveling properties rather are really really good like you can pretty much slap paint on willy-nilly and it will level itself out and make you look like a pro it is brilliant paint so if you haven't tried it yet have a go you won't be disappointed i promise in case you're curious pure eco also do a really nice chalk paint it's not just the silk finish they have a chalk paint range and um waxes hemp oil decorative finishing products stains you name it they've got everything so here i am i'm just going back over it now to smooth out the brush strokes and make it all nice and flat and pretty even though it has its own self-leveling properties it it um it's good practice to smooth out your brush strokes normally when i paint a draw front it's actually attached to the draw these draw fronts had to be removed to remove the the hardware um it's a lot easier to paint the drawer if it's the draw front if it's attached to the drawer so i'll just have to use my balancing skills here and get it done but i'll get the first coat on and then we'll show you what it looks like with all the coats on the lagoon by purico has a clear base coat so you may need to do three to four coats of it to get full coverage um but it's worth it so have a go okay almost finished so you'll you'll see one at the end there that the um first coat is quite transparent but it'll build up over consecutive coats and have a really nice smooth finish not all of the pure eco paints take this many coats it's just this particular one that i've chosen to use on these bedsides has a clear base coat okay there you go there's the first coat of pure eco's silk finish in the color lagoon okay here they all are after four coats of pure eco lagoon all the draw fronts are all painted and ready to be have their draw pulls attached and attached to the drawers now you'll notice none of these draw fronts are exactly the same the stencils are far from perfect they've got lumps bumps grooves notches that's just the way they work they're not perfect but they look beautiful when they're finished okay here they are before nice and plain and bland and here they are now so we used on this pure eco stain on the top in the color storm pure eco silk finish in the color lagoon pure eco top coat in the eggshell finish a my stencil lady stencil all the stains paint stencils and even the drawer hardware is available to buy in our store at refurbies mr refurbies gently drilled the new holes for the draw pulls because i'm too rough and it had to go through the filler and now they're all done and pretty and ready for sale hope you liked the video i hope it was easy to follow and understand and i really really hope you'll have a go at doing a raised stencil because it's very rewarding and the effect is gorgeous